Hi everyone. So my name is Or, and I'm very happy to be here. And I'm the CEO and founder of SimilarWeb, and we are the leading market intelligence company for the digital world. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about market intelligence now in the next few slides. Uh, but before that, I will give you some dry facts. Um, so we operate for a little bit uh, more than 10 years. Uh, we have um, 400 employees and raised a little bit more than $100 million. And we are a global company spread in eight locations. And uh, we provide digital insights. And I will try to show you in my presentation today what that means. So what we promise to our customers, we basically provide companies the right insight they need to win their market. We provide them what we call digital market intelligence on every website or every app worldwide in order for them to understand, track, and grow their market share. And <clears throat> what we really provide in a more simpl simple world is a very nice SaaS platform that our customers can log in and can put any website, any app, and see all their data. So on every website, you can see how much traffic he's get what work for him, where he's getting his traffic, where he's putting his advertising money. And the same thing for apps. We provide how many, um, um, how many devices ins uh, have installed a certain app, how many users open an app, how much time they use, and etc. And this is a slide that I really like, because this is really give you a feeling of what, how it's feel when you um, log into SimilarWeb in the first time. You feel that you just discover an amazing platform that's showing you everything happening in the digital world, and you can see everything about your competitor and the, and the industry and uh, understand everything that happened. And we really see ourselves as helping companies to really conquer the world with our data. And I would like to spend now another few minutes really to going more deeper and um, to tell you why we think that market intelligence is so critical for the business success in our world. And there is, the main reason is, as you all know, the world is shifting very heavily into digital in the past few years. Uh, we all spend most of our time in our phones, in our desktop, TVs becoming digital over the internet, radio as well. And, uh, and what happened when everything is shifting into digital, that everything is measurable. Because in the digital world, you can un understand, track your user, understand their engagement, understand uh, their churn, understand um, if your ROI for advertising is work or not work, and what causing to businesses to be extremely data-driven. As we're seeing today, marketing become a pure data-driven uh, organization. And when you start to being extremely uh, data-driven, basically you're becoming more successful, it's extremely important when you analyze your data, not only you look on your own data. Because when you do that, the world look like that. The world look like you are all alone, and there is no one around you. But in reality, the world look like that. That the road is very messy, there's endless competition, everything is moving around you, and you always need to be on top of things, like driving. But as I said, it's extremely important to benchmark, and we call it who knows when, what, what we really mean. That give you two small examples. If you're growing 5% a year and the entire industry growing 20% a year, you're not doing the right thing. If your conversion rate is 1% and your competitor are 5%, you're going to lose in the end. And you need to know that. And you need context of the market to understand if you are in the right direction or not. And this is like, I like to compare it to playing chess without seeing your other player tools. You cannot win like that. And this is what we call a market intelligence um, um, data. And we provide today this data to all the biggest brands in the world. We have thousands of customers in all industries. And they use our data basically to drive their business success. But not only for benchmark, as I said, they also use it to reveal what is the best marketing strategies of their competitor, discover more opportunities, other markets to approach, understand their user behaviors outside of the website and inside their industry, and most importantly, to track their success and understand if they're going in the right North Star for their business. And as you understand, this data is extremely engaged because we really see everything happening in the digital world, and we love to use it to share a very interesting insight um, every time we speak. So today, I uh, prepare for you a very two nice examples to show you the power behind the data and the insights we uh, provide as a company. And I want to talk, and when I talk on stage, I always like to talk about companies who are going to be public or already public. So 
Today I'm going to speak with you about a very nice company called Blue Apron. Their company operates in the meal delivery in the United States, doing very nice work. They are now trying to go public. And my other example, I'm going to talk about Twitter versus Snapchat. And um, the reason is because last year, on this stage, I was, uh, Twitter, um, Snapchat was a private company, go, tried to go in public, and I decided to reveal their numbers on stage, and I want to show you what happened one year later. Now, start with Blue Apron, a um, very nice company. They send you like a, a, an ingredient package to your house that you can start cooking with ingredients on a weekly basis. And we decided to go to look on this market of me meal delivery services in the United States to understand what's going on. So, in first glance, we took the uh, three main uh, player deals, Blue Apron, Home Chef, and HelloFresh, and we saw that, indeed, Blue Apron is the leading uh, and player in this field, but not by far. So he has 40% of the market share, while the other two together also have 40%. So it's very interesting competition. And we decided to look more deeply on the traffic to understand what driving the traffic uh, success for Blue Apron. And we, we, when we look on the entire um, metrics, if you see here on the, on the table, you see the monthly visit they have and the unique visitor. And you can see that Blue Apron indeed are the leading. But we found out that HelloFresh, the second player, have much more engaged users. So we decided to check why HelloFresh users are more engaged. And the interesting reason we found is because in the last three quarters, probably because they are trying to go public, Blue Apron are basically increase extremely heavily their paid traffic. And they grew up from 250, more than 250% over the next three quarters, from half a million visits to one and a half, almost one and a half million visits only from non-organic. And we said, OK, and we saw also that their traffic is not really growing, but they're spending more money on buying traffic. So we understand, OK, so if they need to buy, where is all the organic traffic go? Why are they getting? The, the, the industry terms, like if people search meal delivery and then ending up on the Blue Apron. So we decided to check their search traffic to understand what users search in Google in order to get Blue Apron. And the interesting thing, we saw that over the 2 million visits they're getting from search, that is very impressive, 93% are only their brand terms. That is nice because they have a strong brand, but from the other side, what happened with all the users that are looking for meal delivery, meal delivery services? It's, it's very small that they don't get all these industry terms. And we checked, we decided to go even further and check, OK, so where all the users that search meal delivery are ending up? And we discovered this extremely interesting insight. What you see here is a very nice graph over the past few months all the users that searching meal delivery, where are they ending? And the crazy thing that 89 percent are not ending up in Blue Apron. They're ending up in all those websites, and only 1.4 ending up in Blue Apron. So looking on all those insights, it's made me think about really our, our Blue Apron are on the way to win the market to pure domination. And it was very interesting thoughts when I look and dice and slice the numbers. And I put them aside, and I will jump to my uh, nice second example for today before we run out of the time. And it's Snapchat. So last year, I was here exactly on this stage talking about Snapchat versus Twitter before Snapchat went public. And I present those numbers. So last year, in 2016, in the US on the Android device, Snapchat, as you see, was installed on 21 uh, devices in the US, and Twitter was installed on 24% of the device. So more devices have Twitter installed. But if you look on the daily active, like how many people really using and opening the, the app, you saw that 9% of the population use Snapchat versus only 4.6 that use Twitter. That this is really the important metric, how many uh, daily active users are really engaged with the, with the platform. What basically um, um, drove the insight that I said last year on stage, that if I had to put a bet, I would say that Snapchat is twice the size of, as Twitter. And I decided last week to really look on the market cap and look what I discovered. Snapchat market cap today is 21 billion, and Twitter is 12 billion. And I was very happy to see that those kinds of estimation really rolled up over the, the past year uh, into the market cap. So saying that, I decided to go here again and showing you 
this year numbers that we're seeing, and maybe next year we can have some conclusion. So what you're seeing here is the 2017 numbers of Snapchat versus Twitter app on Android divide in the United States. So you can see that Snapchat increased uh, the market share on installs. Now almost 24% of the device in the United States have Snapchat installed versus Twitter that was dropping down dramatically to 16% of the Android device installed. Well, if you look on the uh, active users, Snapchat went a little bit down. Only 8.5% of the users are using uh, Snapchat daily versus 3.5% of the users using Twitter. What drove the conclusion, if you're going to bet today, Snapchat is two and a half times bigger than Twitter. And as you saw before the market cap, uh, if you're going to ask me, I will think that Snapchat have few a few other billions of market cap to gain according to the situation. So I hope you enjoy uh, those insights and uh, enjoy the conference. Thank you so much.